Hello and welcome to the Friday video for module number three. This one is going to be problem number 11. Deals with confidence intervals. And I'm going to show you how to do these in uh, StatCrunch, but I'm also going to talk about what the confidence intervals actually do mean. So this will be important not just in the calculations, but also in the interpretation of confidence intervals. So let's begin, especially with that first part. So we're given a nutritionist wants to determine how much time nationally people spend eating and drinking. Probably far too much for me. Suppose for a random sample of, so n is 964. Sample size is 964. People age 15 or older, the mean, so x bar, amount of time spent eating and drinking is one point mean of that sample, so it's going to be x bar with a standard deviation, so this is S, the standard deviation of the sample, of 0.62 hours. So we're given X bar, the mean of the sample, and S, the standard deviation of the sample. Now we've got to complete parts A through D, so there must be four parts here. Um, a histogram of time spent eating and drinking is skewed right, so positively skewed, so the tail is in the positive direction. Use this result to explain why a large sample size is needed to construct a confidence interval. Central limit theorem. Let's look at these four options. Since the distribution of time spent eating and is normally distributed, the sample must be, no, it's not normally distributed. It's highly skewed. Normal distribution is symmetric, so it's not A. Uh, the distribution of the sample mean will always be approximately normal. That is not true. The distribution of the sample mean will be approximately normal if the sample size is large enough and if the variance of the data is finite. So B is not true. Um, let's skip to D because we know C is going to be the right answer. The distribution of the sample mean will never be approximately normal. That's false. The distribution of the sample mean will be approximately normal as long as the sample size is large enough. So let's look at C. I'll just go ahead and click C because we know that's right. Since the distribution of the time spent eating is not normally distributed, it's skewed right, that's true, the sample must be large, true, so that the distribution of the sample means will be approximately normal. That is entirely true. And this comes from the central limit theorem, one of the most important theorems in statistics. Check answer. Ha, I am excellent. In 2010, there were over 200 million people nationally age 15 or old, older. <clears throat> so little n, our sample size is 964. Big n, the population, is 200 million. Sample size is pretty small compared to the population size. However, it doesn't matter. It's not how big the sample size is in relation to the population. It's how big the sample size is, period. And a large sample size gives us an awful lot of information. Um, sample size is less than 5% of the population. The book emphasizes that for a finite population, even a humongous one of 200 million, the sample size needs to be no greater than 5% of that population. Check the answer. Woohoo! I'm well done. C. Now we've got to calculate and interpret a confidence interval. So I'm going to calculate, so I'm going to go up to question help, pull up stat crunch, and that should be kind of fun, and then open a new stat crunch, and then boom, here it is. I don't need it that wide, so I'm going to make it really, eh, not that narrow. Okay, so there's my stat crunch. Determine and interpret a 99% confidence interval for the mean. So for mu, confidence intervals are always about the population parameter, in this case about mu. Um, so we're going to go up to stat. Notice that we're dealing with one sample. We're only looking at Americans age 15 or older. We're not comparing that sample or that population with anything else. Notice also that we don't know sigma we only know S, the standard deviation of the sample. So it's going to be T, because we don't know sigma, and it's going to be one sample. And we're going to do this with summary because we've got the data summaries for us. 
So we'll fill in the blanks now. The sample mean is 1.58. The sample standard deviation is 0.62. The sample size is 964. Uh, we want a confidence interval because it says we need a interpreted 99% confidence interval. The confidence level is 0.99. Any other options? Let's hit compute. There's the results. So it's telling us that we're calculating a confidence interval for the population mean based on the sample mean of 1.58. Double check, okay. The standard error which we know is equal to s divided by the square root of n. Degrees of freedom will be n minus 1. The lower limit, the upper limit. So we're 99% confident that the true population mean, mu, is between 1.53 and 1.63. So let's look at our options. Uh, there is a 99% probability, nope, 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 nope. Confidence interval is not about a probability. It's never about a probability. The nutritionist is 99% confident so far that the amount of time spent eating or drinking per day for any individual, nope, 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 nope. It's not about an individual. It's about an average, about the population average. So it's not B either. And let's go to D. The requirements for constructing a confidence interval are not satisfied. Yes, they are. So we can skip D, and we know it's C. It's the only one that's left. The nutritionist is 99% confident that the mean, aha, the mean, yes, amount of time spent eating or drinking per day, yep, is between and three decimal places. 1.528. Check answer. Woohoo! Excellent. And D, the last one. Could the interval be used to estimate the mean amount of time of a nine that a nine-year-old spent? No, it can't. I, I don't even have to look at the options. It can't. Our sample is based on people's 15 or older. And we can't answer any questions about nine-year-olds. So let's see which of these five we could click on. Uh, it's no. The interval is about individual time spent eating and drinking per day. It's, the interval is not about averages and expected time spent, not what an individual. So it's not A. Uh, it's not B because it says yes. Uh, the interval is about the mean. That part is true, eating and drinking per day for ages, and can be used to find the mean amount of time for... No, it can't, because a 9-year-old is not 15 or older. 9-year-olds are very different from 15-year-olds. Just listen to their jokes. C, no, the interval is about people age 15 or older. That's true. The mean amount of time spent eating or drinking may differ. That's true. I'm going to click on C. Uh, D, yes, no, that's wrong. Um, the interval is about individual time. No, the interval is not about the individual time. The interval is about the mean of the population. Mean of population. And it's not E because we already calculated an interval. So check answer. Boom. There we go. So what did we do in this problem? We did two things. One, we interpreted what a confidence interval means. Remember, the confidence interval is about an average of a population, not an individual observation, not the sample mean, but for the population mean. Two, we know that confidence intervals have nothing to do with probability. They're about confidence in where that mean lies. And three, we found out how to calculate confidence intervals using StatCrunch. And it's a lot easier than doing it by hand. I mean, let's, let's be serious about this. Um, we knew it was going to be based on the t distribution because we had the standard deviation of the sample, not the standard deviation of the population. And we knew it was going to be one sample because we were just trying to learn about one group. 
we weren't trying to compare two groups. Now, see, if you do this by hand, you take a lot of time. But hey, 15 minutes, we had everything done. It would have been a lot faster if I didn't talk so much. 15 minutes, we had everything done for this problem. I mean, we just went into stat, t stats, one sample, with summary, because we had the data summarized for us. And that's it. So hopefully, you start to see the value of doing these things with StatCrunch. Use the computer to perform the calculations. Do not use the computer to do the interpretation for you. That's what you are for, the interpretation. The computer is for the calculation. Have a great day. Take care.